Uh, this case is, uh, is again, uh, let's go back to endodontic failure of these uh, four incisors. Uh, this uh, lady came in uh, complaining about the dark uh, margins around these uh, PFM crowns um, with, uh, with definite oxidation damage. So the tissue is inflamed, the tissue is almost purple. Uh, part of it is inflammation, part of it is, uh, is the color of these actual roots. And everything was obviously splintered together, so we couldn't clean, uh, decay, what have you, but uh, the failures. Our treatment plan was the extraction of those four incisors and the placement of two serrut 21s in the central incisor site and then creating a four unit bridge with cantilevered laterals uh, given us uh, the aesthetic uh, result. The reason that we do uh, a bridge that's formed like this as opposed to the classic two implants in the lateral incisor areas is uh, strength. We like to have more bulk of, uh, of zirconia in, in our abutments the lateral abutment is much thinner uh, and it could probably withstand the force of four teeth but when we have an alternative uh, to that when we can do this on two uh, heftier implants why why the risk? And this is our philosophy. Our philosophy is to try to minimize the risk wherever we can and give the patients the most aesthetic results possible and there is no, because we're using uh, a one-piece design, we're not scared to put two adjacent implants in. Uh, it's not the same fears as two four-millimeter titanium implants. In this case, it would be very, very difficult to, uh, to get an ideal result, whereas with, uh, with these materials, our, our options are much greater. So this is at the, at the time of surgery. Implants are placed with a little bit of uh, socket uh, grafting on the two laterals. This is a day after surgery. This is what everything looks like healing. Uh, again, the patient leaves with everything protected with, uh, with a removable Essex appliance with a little bit of the composite on the, the facial. Uh, as healing progresses, we can see the, the tissues around these two implants are still very nicely maintained. We can see the papilla is still maintained between, and you can see that the, the lateral incisors, those, uh, those pontics are starting to take shape. <clears throat> this is a close-up view of the tissue as it's healing, and the surface of the, of the implant starting to collect a little bit of, uh, of black. An occlusal view of the healing and again we're waiting for the tissues to fully mature. The angulation uh, without an issue this uh, you can see with a more distant implant against that canine you can see that we have more than enough space uh, for our restorative materials uh, with a very this is not a, bit, it's a, a rather inclined maxilla and we still don't have angulation issues. So the one-piece design um, is, is extremely, uh, you have a lot of options in terms of restorative uh, protocols, in terms of restorative flexibility, even though you have a one-piece design. This is replacing a tooth. Uh, if you had further resorption uh, that was more palatal and you needed sort of uh, cantilevered pontics, uh, cantilevering facially, uh, and you would have to have screw holes. You could do all these things with titanium, but you're doing it as a compromise to having an ideal bridge. Uh, with these implants, you need to have an ideal foundation before moving forward with reconstruction. But if we think about it, this is where we want to be with titanium. We don't want to compromise. We don't want to put the implant in where the bone is. We want to build the bone, we want to idealize the site before we go in there and place the implant because that's going to give us a long-term success and this is, at the same time, this is the reason why in the, in the right cases, if our space selection is correct, angulation is, uh, is not something I worry about. 
this is a uh, once uh, once we're through the integrative period, we're able to provide our patients with a fixed uh, provisional. So this is our fixed electronic provisional in place, and we're allowed to watch the remainder of this webinar and for access to all of AsiaNews.com's past and future webinars. Please become a premium member of AsiaNews.com. To become a premium member, simply click on the Premium Membership tab to sign up now and gain access to all of AsiaNews.com's past and future webinars.